The warmest of greetings to you, and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching. This is the podcast to help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science: storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen to empower your children. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me today is hi. I'm Helen. I teach Year One and Two. Hi, I'm Rob. I teach in a small village school in Buckinghamshire, and I teach in Key Stage Two. And today we are exploring learning outcomes in music and computing with a folk tale from China. You can listen to the story by downloading our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, EpicTales.co.uk, for Big Man Drum. There you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you're an epic educator, as of 30th of September 2022, you'll also get the story as a paperback, gloriously illustrated by Winnie the Witch's very own Corky Paul. Don't worry if you missed that though, as you can order the book from any bookshop, including Amazon. And epic educators can access the ebook and full audio book through the Epic Tales app. Right now, though, let's conclude our discussion with Helen, Rob, Nai Chin, and the Gorillas. And I must admit, we've been talking a little bit about how these are amazing animals in the wilderness of Africa, the once wilderness of China. And this is a story from a time before banks were invented. So, where's the computing in this? <laughs> it's a very surprising I'm this. Yes, I can't, learning I, outcome. I can't guess. So, so, I cannot guess this one. So, come on then, Rob. Where's, where's the computing for ages 7 to 11? The computing comes in the use of software to create programs mm. and also to kind of think about editing software as well or manipulating images okay i recently bought myself a green screen which i thought this would be the perfect use for this if you don't have an actual green screen green backing paper works just as well mm -hmm. but to get your class to photograph them being different characters from the story mm. at different points in front of the green screen and then edit and manipulate the picture to show different parts of it so really having a yeah. look at the, mm. the software to do that. And I know at school we use iPads, other brands are available, yeah. and there are lots of editing software packages available that you can use to, mm -hmm. to do this. I also thought if you wanted to represent the movements of the characters, you could have a go at not using Bbots, but using a program like Scratch, for example, to okay. put the code in for how the characters are moving. So you might have along the ground to start off with and then going up and then along again and back down. So you mean moving in the sense of um, paths rather yes. than the yeah. articulated joints we were talking yeah, about yeah, yesterday? Yeah, yeah, the paths that they're taking. Yeah. Uh -huh. So having a look at the different instructions of different algorithms you'd have to give your characters to move along mm -hmm. those paths successfully. And to challenge your more able children, you could say, okay, I want you to add in more characters. So you may have more than one gorilla. And mm -hmm. for your children who struggle with computing or don't find it as easy as other subjects or other children, then, okay, just focus on one or two key characters from the mm. story. There must be a way that you could combine those activities, and I'm sure there must be some software where you could um, take a photo of yourself against a green screen or, or take a picture or a puppet or something against a green mm. screen and turn it into a little image that you could stick into a Scratch project and send along a path you're, you're nodding yeah. away so yeah. i know i know that on scratch in the characters you can use the camera on your device to show your face instead okay. of the face that's on there if you ask me how to do it now i can't remember but <laughs> if i had it in front of me i would be able to tell yeah. you definitely worth exploring and if your school or you yourself as an educator can get access to the adobe creative suite um, adobe after effects have some really i mean they're, they're, they're tricky to get a handle on if you're coming to them for the very very first time but once you get an understanding of them they are really easy tools for making images on screen or articulating images on screen so there is one function it has where you could basically yes get a, a photo of yourself or a drawing that you've made of a character you map it to a skeleton and you then sort of give 
the skeleton or the different joints paths to take that could be a, a, a good one to look at with ages 7 to 11 i'm sure maybe, maybe the 9 to 11 range yeah yeah i think like you said you yourself as an educator need to have a, a handle on not only mm. how it works but what happens if i push this mm, yes yeah. <laughs> so you've got to know your way around the the program and any potential pitfalls that might be there Whenever you're doing anything on a computer, you need to know where the undo button is, don't <laughs> <Yeah>. you? <laughs> Definitely. The undo and the save. And the save. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I think children especially pick up things like Adobe After Effects super quick. Mm -hmm. So if you get your head around it and then show them how to do something, they will probably be surpassing the teacher in oh, yeah. no time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> he might be creating the next Disney studio in your classroom. <laughs> that would be something. Sell the children to Disney. Hey, hey, that's come out so, right. So, so, yeah, so sell, sell their product to Disney. <laughs> but that's, that's it for computing. Excellent. We also had some musical ideas, though, for ages four to seven, I believe, um, ringing out from your side of the conversation, Helen. Where, is this going to involve drumming, perhaps? Yes, of course it is. The main, <laughs> is the it main... also going to involve the band, the Gorillas. It could do if you so wished. Um, okay. If, if you want not? to get the, a link between the music and the animation, yeah, in there, yeah. definitely. <laughs> but I was going more down the rhythm route because mm -hmm. there's very specific beating out rhythm in the story, and I thought a really good skill for the children to learn, an important one in music, is listening to a rhythm and copying a rhythm mm. and you can have so much fun with just that objective um getting children to copy rhythms passing a rhythm around you know around a circle you know starting with it the next person copies it the next person copies it the next person copies it back to the beginning and, yeah. and then getting children to make up their own simple rhythms so that they're able to make one up and repeat it so they're they're thinking about a specific rhythm rather than getting carried away as they're likely to do. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to, you could link the words in as well from the story and maybe put them to a different rhythm if it's possible or put some different words to a different rhythm. Give the gorilla something different to say and a different rhythm in which to say it. Mm -hmm. So that was the first activity and then slightly linked an outdoor activity hmm. and again also linked to DT. I mean the, the reason I've come up with this is because at my previous school we did a lot of forest school and the children would sometimes just start turning things into drums. We had oil Sounded drums. like Rob was doing that with his cup just then. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had some big oil drums, we had some pallets um, and a few mm -hmm. times with the children I've created a drum kit and got them to explore really it's quite an exploratory music activity the sounds that the different materials or objects make yeah. and an oil drum is great for that because it has a fantastic echo to it mm. yeah find it finding and making a natural drum kit and again you can bring your rhythm activity outside once you've done that <laughs> which is yeah. often a good a good place for drum related activities to be Have a great party to celebrate getting to the end of all <laughs> of these amazing topics that we've been exploring yes. the science the gorillas the rainforests and so on absolutely end on a very upbeat note <laughs> i've been waiting for the whole two weeks to do that <laughs> and now you have <laughs> That's all we have time for in this episode, folks, and indeed this story. If you'd like to talk to us about anything you've heard in this podcast, or if there's a subject you are soon to teach that you'd like us to cover, you can find us on social media using at Teach Happily, or leave us a review using your favorite podcast app. Please also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start a story-led revolution in classrooms around the world, so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective, memorable, and enjoyable all at the same time. Next week, we'll take off to Mexico for an interstellar story in preparation for World Space Week. But right now, it only remains for us to say cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. No, all the monkey business is done. <laughs> <laughs> Got to let you have the last word there. <laughs> Sorry.